Hi, I'm James Schellinglaw, and I'm here with Greg White, who's Senior Vice President, Technology and Operations for Passport Online. Now, if you don't know Passport Online by now, it's been around for 25 years. And in fact, that's one of the reasons we're doing this interview is that it's uh, just is celebrating its 25th anniversary in business. Uh, it's a technology service that uh, has evolved over time. We're going to talk about that. But a lot of travel advisors in the market today are in some way touched by what it offers. Uh, one of them, they probably use a, a website or they have some kind of connection with suppliers through uh, um, uh, uh, through, through the systems that Passport Online has developed. And we're going to talk to Greg about both the anniversary, what they offer now, what Passport Online offers now, and how technology has evolved over the past 25 years. And then uh, maybe we're going to pick his brain a little bit about where he thinks it's going in the future. And you're going to find out about all that and more on Insider Travel Report. Now, Greg, first of all, uh, how are you and where are you? It's a question I ask all the time just to make sure everybody's okay. Well, where, where am I first? I'm a few miles from our corporate headquarters in Beaverton, Oregon. Uh, as with most of our team, we're, we're working remotely. That's currently required by our state to the maximum extent possible. We have to facilitate remote work, and that's actually going really well for us. Personally, I'm actually doing great right now. Uh, I think like a lot of you, I've gone through all the stages of grief with COVID crisis and from denial to acceptance and then finding, uh, finding our place in it, in the thick of it, and then finding out what we can do to get through this together. Mm -hmm. So for our company and for me personally, staying positive has been critical and just focusing on the task at hand, which again is just first helping our customers weather the storm and then setting all of us up to thrive when the recovery comes. So I'd say- No, that's great. And how are you personally and your family? Everybody's okay? Everybody's great. Uh, the biggest challenge is this work from home situation. Just this morning, I had a, a conference call and, and it was not going well. My wife is also working from home and she has uh, video presentations that she's doing. We can't always coordinate those things. So sometimes it's, you still revert to, you know, failing wire and cups and strings and things and you just try to work around it. But uh, things are going really well and we're all healthy and looking forward to getting out and traveling again someday. Well, hopefully, uh, and, and that's all great to hear. And yes, we all are look for, we're looking forward to getting out and traveling and actually meeting uh, in, as part of the travel industry. Now, uh, Passport Online, as I said, just celebrated its 25th year serving travel agencies and travel advisors. Tell us a little bit about what the company offers today in terms of products and services. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously 25 years is a long time to build a lot of products and a big service offering. So this is always a challenge to just boil it down in a couple of minutes. But if I was to break it down, I'd probably say there's about five or six areas that we address. The, the big one, and this is the core of everything that we do, is, is content aggregation. So that's the original problem that we solve is how do you get content from hundreds of travel suppliers into the hands of thousands of travel agencies and avoid having everybody duplicate all of the same work and then when things change, how do you keep everybody updated? So uh, a big part of what we do is this content aggregation. So we work with all these travel suppliers. We standardize their content. We receive it in a variety of different ways. And then we fill in gaps, fix issues with it, and then layer in promotions from the industry as a whole and also exclusives from consortia. And that all goes into our central database. So that's, that's more of a product for the suppliers. That's a value for them being able to have a single company that they can work with to distribute their products. Uh, but it's really that database that all of that product goes into that then powers all of those products that we make available to our travel agencies and travel advisors. So those areas that we talk about that are our products today would be broken up into uh, like shopping and website tools. So the big players in that space for us are our next site product. Uh, that's a complete website program with that content integrated into it. And the power of that is it really can be as much or as little as you need. If you already have an existing website, you can just in uh, integrate the content into your website. If you need a complete website, then it has the capability to handle everything. That includes mm -hmm. email, domain hosting, SSL for security, all of the content management tools. So it really is like three, three to five minutes and you have a basic website and you're up and running. Mm -hmm. uh, also, and so that's all shopping. That's just uh, cached content. Um, the uh, other area that we have a big presence is on our social media and marketing right. side. 
So it, one of our newer products is ESP. Uh, we have, um, I don't know the exact number, probably about 1,100 agencies that are using the ESP product. Uh, but that is that has really grown in both popularity and capability over the last couple of years. And at the, at the start of that product was uh, basically as a, as a managed marketing platform where our team builds the social media content, sets the delivery dates, and if you want to be, you're just hands off, and that that content flows through to your uh, Facebook business page. Mm -hmm. But there is a whole lot more need there as well. So we have. Uh, quite a few enhancements to that product that have been rolled out recently, self-service capabilities. Um, and so that's really growing uh, tremendously and is a real timely product, especially now in the midst of COVID. The other area of products is on the booking side. Mm -hmm. uh, those products so far, whether it's ESP, it's Next Site, they're shopping. So it's cached content. It's this from pricing that we receive from suppliers and uh, onboard information, things of that nature. Uh, but it's just for research and shopping and marketing. So you can also add our tandem tools, which seamlessly extend the uh, shopping process into the booking workflow. And that's all optional. Our philosophy is that you know use as, as many or as few of our products as is appropriate for your agency, and we'll have an opportunity to grow together, and you can use more of our tools when the time is right. Um, so then getting into a bit more technical areas, that's where we have the next segment of products. That's really our, our tools for developers and for third-party integrators. Uh, historically, if you wanted a website, uh, you were using our next site website product. But if you wanted to do something different, you wanted to control the user experience, you wanted to control a bit more how it was displayed to consumers, that's where the desire for raw data comes in. Mm. So we have a variety of different products and services in that area today ranging from simple to complicated, and it depends on how big your technical team is or how adventurous you're feeling. Maybe you want sure. to dabble with it yourself. Uh, so we've recently rolled out our content API, and uh, if you're a technical person, the term API is familiar to you, but it's essentially a machine-to-machine -machine communication way for, for different servers to talk to each other, get that raw data, and then, and then you're responsible for styling it. Uh, and then for people that are really wanting to control the experience, our content data feed. That's just essentially a complete dump of our product on a daily basis, a big snapshot. And you can slice it and dice it and analyze it and work with it in any way that you want to. But obviously the, the technical overhead, the size of your team, the resources is much greater with that. Yeah. Um, well, that uh, you know, it's funny. I, I've seen you guys a year for years at all these different travel consortia, and I know you have relationships with many of them. Uh, and I always thought it was amazing how you could sort of slice and dice the products uh, to really highlight their preferred suppliers and the deals that apply to them, and then you go back and do it with another group. So Absolutely. it's like you know that's the that's the magic th that you do in terms of you know. So if you're a travel agency member of uh, XYZ consortia. Uh, mm -hmm. You're going to be get only getting that feed from from their preferreds and the deals that are applied to them. Whereas if you're for another one, you'll get a whole whole different set of feed. So it's exactly. So I thought yeah. it was always fascinating. Now, when you started uh, 25 years ago, what was the initial product that you offered? Oh, so uh, Randy Goodrich, who I'm sure probably a lot of you have run into. Oh yeah, I know Randy of our company and. You know, he'll probably smack me if I get the name wrong because it was a few years before my time with Passport. Uh, but I can certainly characterize it for you. Uh, it was either your personal passport or your travel program. I forget. I actually had I had copies of the floppy disks that we used to distribute the product in my desk. <laughs> oh, the real years. floppy disks, right? The, yep. uh... <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it was all part of the, you know, someday we're going to open the Passport Online Museum, and this will be one of our exhibits to show our history. And, you know, there, it was just – a different time. It was the state of the art of what was possible then, but it was the same. It was the same core problem, and the tools were different, but the the solution or the need was the same. Way back in the day, state of the art was fax machines, and so you know you've got a travel agency whose fax machine, a travel agency whose fax machine is just running twenty four seven, and you're getting updates to travel deals, and then you've got a stack of brochures, and then somebody sits down in front of you and says, "What do you have for the Bahamas?" I'm like, oh, hang right. on, let me let me pull a ream of paper out and work <laughs> through waxy fax paper and try to figure out what I've got. And, you know, it's, it's outdated 
you know, by design. And so Randy and, and a couple of other founders who are in the travel space said there's got to be a better way. And so working with what the state of the art was at the time, that was where we stepped in and said, we'll receive all of these faxes and brochures and we'll have a big team of, of uh, of content entry specialists who will transcribe manually all of this content into a database. But this was pre-internet, so this was distributed in the form of a, a desktop tool that you would install, and then weekly updates that would be mailed to you by CD, or a modem bank that your system would dial into for weekly updates. And, you know, it seems crazy by today's standards, but at the time that was that was quite revolutionary and was solving a very real problem. And that was about the first four years of Passport and about 1999, that's when we really started into the second phase. Well, let's, let's talk about that, how you, you, how you then evolved your products uh, to, to get to where you are today. I mean, what, what were some of the, the key points where you kind of made uh, major st uh, strides forward uh, right. uh, with the technology that you offered? Well, so the first big move in 1999, 2000 timeframe was really that move away from desktop and into the, into the world of the internet. And so the, the very first product when we became a software as a service company um, was called Vacation Port. And so that's what- I do did. remember that name, I will say that. <laughs> yep, yep. So it was, again, it was, it, was, it was a miracle for the time, but it was, you know, by today's standard, of course, you look back and you laugh. And, and you know, it, it was a very uh, a simple product. It was basically a full, uh, a fully contained search shopping, uh, a search and shopping tool that could be integrated into a website, just framed in. And, uh, and the miracle was being able to search for products on the internet from travel suppliers. But, you know, that wasn't necessarily as easy for the average travel agency to utilize. So you have people that are experts in travel, they're not experts in technology. They know they need it, uh, but they don't know how to use it yet, and it's kind of cumbersome. So they have to, you know, I've got a, I've got a nephew that's good with computers. He'll help me build the website, of that nature. <laughs> that was always the key, get, get that Absolutely. nephew or that intern who knew what they were doing, right? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, we, you know you, you'd hear those those words on a support or sales call. Like, don't worry, I have a nephew. Like, oh, no, it's going to be one of these. But uh, and nothing against nephews. They're, they're wonderful people. <laughs> uh, so one of our first big challenges was really how to make that technology more accessible, given, given what was needed at the time, which was really a travel website. You know, social media was a, was a glimmer in our eyes, yet there wasn't any, any of that. Sure. Automation was, there wasn't anything about uh, booking automation. It was how do I get my website more accessible? So the first big development was really our next site product, which started or the first version of it was rolled out in about 2003 or 2004. And the difference was now I don't have to know anything about HTML code. I didn't have to know anything about design. I could use built-in templates and a variety of different color themes and, and what we called content modules to just plug functionality into the site without knowing what's going on in the guts. And so within a few minutes, I'd have a, a basic but completely functional website mm. up and running. And that was a real game changer. That, that meant that there was a whole set, section of the travel agency market that was now able to deploy some sort of web presence. And that, uh, that met with you know, tremendous growth for us. Uh, but you know, so for a period of time, that was the space we were in. Was, it was shopping, it was websites, it was marketing. Uh, but it, about 12 years ago, um, both based on us looking at where we could be logically growing, where it made sense for our customers, but also, you know, changing patterns on the part of consumers and how they were shopping and comfort on the part of agencies, that's when we made the big move into the booking space. And right. so that was, that was a big change for us organizationally and product-wise. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so we rolled out our tandem product uh, about 12 years ago, um, and uh, that uh, that's resulted in obviously a, a, us being quite a different company as we're not just dealing with rich media, which is still a, a core of ours, but also actually handling the transaction we find ourselves. Yeah, well, that's the key. And so now, now travel advisors could book through your products as opposed to the GDS or anything like that, right? Exactly, exactly. And so, you know, it. Each one of us, and we have competitors certainly in the market, and each one of us is, 
has arrived at where we've arrived through a different path. There are competitors of ours that started on the booking side, and that's where they 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 grew out from. And so their their worldview is as a booking company, and then eventually they got into the content side and maybe a little bit of marketing. We started out on the content side and marketing and grew into booking. And so we've got a different, maybe a little different take on it, but the the idea is still that it all needs to work together. It needs to be cohesive. If I'm going to be doing marketing and that's going to drive people to my website, I want to be able to take them through the booking process and I want to make sure that I continue to keep them as a customer and, and can repeat the process with future marketing and all of that. And we always, I mean, we've worked hard to, to respect the relationship between travel agencies and their consumers and not get in, not inject ourselves in the process, but be behind the scenes providing them with the technology that, that they need to be successful. Now, now let's talk a little bit about uh, the evolving needs of travel advisors over the past 25 years. Uh, h- how have their technology needs uh, changed uh, from the beginning? Obviously, you know, I, I date back to where it was pretty much the GDSs. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, don't, I don't go back to the computer, the, the little cards where they booked airlines quite yet, although I certainly uh, was told a lot about those. Uh, and there are still a, fo- a bunch of folks who, and, and although I do, I guess at the beginning, it was still green screen, green screen mm-hmm. technology. Uh, and of course, you know, then we've had the evolution of lots of different booking products, uh, including yours uh, over time. Uh, wh- where do you see, how, how has that uh, need for technology evolved among travel advisors? Well, there's, there's, there's both needs, uh, there's capabilities, and I think there's also attitudes. If right. They've all changed. So, you know, I, the the alliance or allegiance to the green screen um, was pretty deeply entrenched for quite some time. And so adoption of non-GDS technologies for the first few years of our life was, you know, that was quite a hurdle to overcome. And, and anytime you're talking about rolling out technology, the, the biggest challenge is not the technology. Usually it's the adoption, it's, it's retraining people, it's all of that. So the, the, uh, the openness to adopting technology has been is dramatically different now than it was 20 years ago. I mean, there was interest and there was excitement about the internet, but in terms of actually making technology mission critical to your business, that wasn't quite there yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but the sophistication of agencies has changed dramatically. So, um, you know, what, when, when we talked about that first product, Vacation Port, um, again, by today's standards, it was rudimentary, but it, it was appropriate based, in, based on the technical sophistication of the time. Uh, and at, at the same time, you also then had uh, large agencies that were making big investments in technology teams because they wanted to differentiate themselves. Um, but uh, eventually, what is a miracle becomes commonplace in the technology and becomes expected. And then we start looking for the new th- to the new next hotness. Right. You know, you've got what the, the challenges that they were solving today or that they're solving today are not the challenges they were solving 15 years ago. Right. That has become expected. And now they're looking at not just how do I use technology or do I need technology? It's I need technology. How do I use it as an integral part of my business? Um, so we've seen changes to not only the questions they ask when they're, looking at technology, they're thinking about things like how does it improve efficiency? Not just what does it cost, but how does it save me? How does it improve efficiency? Um, They're looking at how that incorporates into an overall strategy. Digital is not just an add-on. It's not just a business card online. It's integrated into their plans for success. Um, And then we've also, I mean, we've really seen evolution. Well, my goodness, the industry, the only constant in the travel industry is change. Absolutely. when you take technology off the off the table and you just look at how travel agencies work, um, twenty years ago, smartphones, no, that, that wasn't a thing. You know, having a computer that wasn't a green screen was was pretty uh, unusual. Having broadband was unheard of. And so now we have we have um, you know, mobile connectivity is the standard and and it's a natural fit. For the travel agencies, I mean, sure. travel is in our t- is 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 in our name. So how preposterous to be chained to a desk! Um, so yeah, we see that 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 uh, emergence of mobile technology, mobile connectedness. It, it really fits the travel advisor, 
Well, especially especially a travel advisor now with over half of them being, you know, independent contractors. Uh, you know, I started a magazine called Agent at Home back in uh, mm-hmm. 2004, you know, and, and at that time uh, we, uh, we had home-based agents and remote agents, but now technology has evolved to help their needs. And now I'd say a good half of them are 60% are working remotely, um, you know, and they can go anywhere in the world with a smart device. Right. So. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not sure which is which is the chicken and which is the egg in that scenario, but they certainly have assisted each other, and they wouldn't be possible, at least not to the extent we're seeing today, without that. I mean, the idea that yeah, you can go anywhere in the world, you can work remotely, you don't have to be in any particular office. Uh, that wouldn't be nearly where it is today if it wasn't for the the emergence of mobile and broadband and all the remote work technologies yeah. and you know, not to put everything, look at everything through the COVID lens, but imagine, you know, imagine where we would be right now if all of those uh, pieces hadn't fallen into place. Right. We have, we have, uh, you know, always on mobile connectivity. We have broadband capability through our phones if we want to use it as a hotspot. We have video conferencing, being able to let us do things like this. Um, it would be a very different world if we said, here's COVID, shut down, go home, and don't talk to each other. This, this is <laughs> Yeah, we're complaining about it as it is, and just think if it was yep. like that way, we'd really be complaining. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, the travel uh, agency business is, is really well-suited. I hate to say it, although they're not getting a lot of money right now, but just continue uh, doing some business and booking or rebooking or doing what they're going to do to serve clients they could not do without today's technology. Absolutely. And at the very least, okay, so maybe we're not able to do everything that we need to do. We can't actually have people travel right now or it's extremely limited. But being able to keep people inspired, stay in touch with them, there's a whole lot of volatility on the bookings in progress that are having to be canceled, rescheduled. Um, If we were only able to interact in all the old methodologies, you would feel very disconnected. So here you have a situation where because of the technology that travel agencies have and travel advisors have, they can actually be the face of confidence for their customers. Hey, I'm, I'm a partner for you. I've, I've got your back. Um, I know I'm making sure everything is fine for you. So when we come out of this, you'll still have your trip. Yeah. And keeping them inspired. We, we need hope right now. Yeah, we no, need something absolutely. to look forward to. Well, you know, a lot of cruise lines are giving virtual cruises now. I think I, we just published it. Ida Holland America did a virtual Alaska cruise, and now they're doing a virtual Norwegian cruise. So I guess yeah. we have to live with that for the time being, right? So, yeah, I, I, I want to see the, uh, how they execute the virtual buffet. That would be- <laughs> well, that's about the last buffet you'll probably see, so you might as well enjoy it because I don't think when, when it's all, we all return, yeah. I think, uh, uh, buffets are going the way of the dodo bird. I don't know we're going to see. Uh, you may have buffets that have a glass wall, and then you'll kind of say, I want that and that, and then a waiter will bring it to you. But, uh, mm-hmm. but you're absolutely right. Now, uh, in terms of how technology needs of travel suppliers have changed, uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, you work with suppliers. Uh, you're, you're constantly downloading their offers, all these different offers going all over, and then uh, you do have booking technology for that. But how, how have their needs changed, at least from your perspective? You know, because they a lot of them were working through the GDS, or they had developed their own booking technology. I mean, look, I remember a day when it was very hard to book a cruise. Uh, through right. technology, and now there's so many different ways to do that. So, how, how have their needs changed over the time? Well. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of drivers for them as far as what's causing them to make changes or is driving those needs. We've got certainly consumer shopping expectations that are driving them towards um, investments in technology. Uh, it's not acceptable to simply have a paper brochure. I need to be able to experience the product, experience the trip. Uh, you've had changes in, in traveler preference, you know, emergence of things like ecotourism and, and uh, river cruises. I mean, there's they're always reinventing themselves either with their own products or, or by new suppliers coming onto the scene. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of external drivers that are causing them to make investments in, in technology. Uh, but they've been certainly, especially recently, I think, and, and COVID again has brought it into focus. They've been caught between two very important priorities that couldn't have happened sort of in the least favorable way possible. Mm-hmm. I, I have, products that now have a a tremendous amount of volatility because I'm having to suspend operations, move out, uh, move out travel dates, revise 
itineraries, do all this. And so I need my focus on that product. I'm having to roll out new confidence programs to help people understand that their trip is safe and that, you know, people won't be on the hook for, for their, their fare if, if something's canceled. And so, and they're doing this in the midst of being at the lowest workforce level in, in memory. Yeah. Um, so in that situation, uh, having these, these, uh, big technology teams and big technology infrastructure and having to work with many, many different parties, that's putting a big stress on suppliers. And so we've certainly seen that, you know, in the last six months or so that they're having to make uh, decisions about technology that, that weren't really on their radar before. How do you do more with less? How do you work with fewer parties, get the best bang for the buck? How do you lean on external parties for something you might have built internally? Uh, so we've certainly seen especially that accelerating as well, that, that build it myself versus work with a party where that's that third party's core competency and let me get down to the business of being a travel supplier and differentiating my product and taking care of my customers. So that's, I mean, there's been gradual changes over the years, but boy, that's the one that really, mm. that's the one that really comes into focus these days. Yeah. Uh, well, let's go to the third part. I mean, how are, how do consumers shop for travel now? Maybe using te technology partly available through Passport Online and, and how do you think they'll shop for travel in the future? Well, um, so shopping today uh, is especially through our products because we're always in the background. It's really the travel agency that has a high degree of control about how do they interact with their products. We have a number of travel agencies who don't use any of our website products. They, are, they have made the move to say that, you know what, travel is, is this relational product. Um, I'm going to interface with my customers through social media and one-on-one -on -one and through direct communication. And so for those customers, uh, the, the shopping experience is very different from somebody that uses one of the Nextsite products. And if somebody's using Nextsite, even there, you're just talking about consumer preference. You've got somebody who knows what they're looking for. Or they have a fixed set of dates and they're trying to fit, you know, a trip within their pre-approved vacation time at work. And so for that person, and, and they're working within a very specific budget, let's say. So for them, they would use one of our travel agencies, uh, next site websites, uh, enter specific criteria, and then we would search the tens of thousands of travel and uh, travel itineraries across our hundreds of suppliers and allow them to compare side by side, view details, including comparing dissimilar travel types. So it's not a given that I know I want to take a cruise or I know I want to take a tour what I know is I want to get away with my family for sure. seven days in June. So, yeah, well, in, mo in most cases, people, people walk in the door. Well, they don't walk in the door anymore, but they go right. to a travel advisor, and they're really not sure. Uh, they, right. they, I want to get away. Um, right. you know, it, yeah, it's one thing if you're going to plan that you know, multi-week African safari, but if it's just like I want to get away somewhere, whether it's a cruise or a resort or whatever, and often they don't know. They're relying on a travel advisor uh, to recommend something that will work for them. Agreed. Yeah, I think it's easy as people that – that travel a lot to assume that everybody has the same experience that we do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not a travel advisor, so I'm sure that maybe this is, maybe this isn't how exactly people think here, but I know that when I'm looking for travel, I, I'm not as much of a seasoned traveler as, as some people are. So there's a whole lot more of the world that I haven't gone to than I have gone to. So for me, it's very much about, I want to do something different. I want to be inspired. So that, that, um, you know, if the first person is the just the facts shopper, the criteria driven shopper, maybe the, the next person would be the, the inspirational shopper. Mm -hmm. And so for them, somebody using our next site websites probably would be more gravitating towards what we call our destination pages. It's something, you know, as so we've added value over time, it's not just a, here's a website tool that builds a website and it has a database of content. It's how, how else can we merchandise content, how else can we put it in front of people in unique and creative ways, but in a way that Passport does the heavy lifting so that an agency can just turn it on and then have it all just respect their supplier preferences, all that stuff that you talked about earlier on. Um, so these destination pages are, are destination specific. They'll focus on, say, Ireland or, or Australia, and it's more about uh, rich imagery and videos and stories and things that get you to understand why would I want to go to Australia? This is exciting. This fits me and my style. And then, you know, interspersed with that contextual products from your preferred travel supplier. So if I'm looking at, at, um, 
you know, a specific destination in Australia, I might see an overland expedition from a certain supplier recommended that's consistent with that content. So uh, there's a variety of different ways that a consumer would shop on a next site website based on how they're looking to, to research and to buy. But ultimately then that is always driven back to the travel agency. The most sure. common way that they make contact is through our, our trip request, which takes that request and puts it into a lead management system that the agency can then see and track the status of and, and you know, identify if they've recommended a different product, for example, something like that. Um, so, uh, you know, today it's, it's kind of broken down like that in, in the future. Um, you know, well, that, that was going to be my next question is like, where are we going with this? Where, 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 what, what technology do you believe travel advisors will need in the future and, and what products and services is passport online perhaps working on to meet those needs? Yeah. And if, if we talked six months ago, I think my answer would have been completely different. Uh, but uh, there's still elements of that that still hold true, which is I think I think we can take a good we can take a good clue from uh, or a cue from the uh, traditional retail sector. You know, as as traditional retailers have moved, say say a, a department store has moved online, they they've been for they've been faced with how do I both approximate the shopping experience and also improve upon it and maybe converge technology with my in-store experience. And for something like travel, uh, there are a lot of decisions and a lot of questions you have to make to, to answer uh, during that shopping experience. Mm -hmm. And it almost always involves a conversation with the travel advisor because it's very difficult to actually have the consumer feel like, I can feel what this is going to be like. I can put myself in this trip. I can see if it fits me. So, you know, thinking out in the future, I think we're going to start to see technology coming to bear to fill that gap, you know, try, trying a trip on for size, if you will, you know, so you can actually see if it fits you beforehand, uh, better, better qualification so that we can help uh, the customer get, maybe not make the complete buying decision, but get a lot closer to it and help themselves and that's, I think that's been accelerated by, you know, we're all at home and, you know, six months ago, what percentage of us were using something like Instacart to have groceries delivered? Well, believe and, believe oh, me, I didn't even know what Instacart was. Right. I learned pretty quickly. And, and to be honest with you, I did not know what Zoom was. Right. Uh, you know, I knew, I, I knew there was something called Skype. What, what was that? I don't know. <laughs> um, I, 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 I used it, but not often. And now I use Zoom every day. Yeah, so there's there's another piece of it is that the ways that we communicate with our customers, I think, is has permanently changed. You know, some of it will go after this is over, if it's ever over, or it's it's. Yeah, I hate the phrase "a new normal." We'll say, "What's next?" You know, in the yeah. "what's next" time, uh, you know, we're going to have some of this that that sticks with us, and uh, I think you know, communication and interaction with customers is going to have to ha is going to have to conform with now what we've all overnight been condition to see as this is how you interact with people. This is how you buy products and services. And if I can't look at somebody face to face, how do I create that connection? If I can't exchange physical goods with them and create a rapport, how do I create that connection? So I think we'll see a lot of that going forward. And then, you know, I think the other big area and it's, it's, I mean, necessity breeds invention or necessity is a mother invention, whatever the, the phrase is that, you know, for better or for worse, we're, we're dealing with, um, you know, reduced staff now and we're figuring out how to do more with less. And, uh, you know, whenever something like th that happens, I think people, you know, adopt those technologies uh, to, you know, kind of on, on an ongoing basis. And um, I think that's going to stick with us. So travel agencies are likely going to keep looking for ways to automate the mundane, you know. Right. Let's not have, if now I'm going to be speaking face-to-face -face with customers more via Zoom or through other technologies, let's not have me manually doing these back office operations. Um, let's not have my agency, you know, manually creating marketing campaigns and sending them out. So that's, you know, that's a big area for us where we're, we're currently working on tools and about to roll out tools that will help in that area. You know, one of the, the big things that we saw when, when COVID rolled out, our first our first thought was, what can we do to help? Everybody's hurting right now. 
So we took, we took basically the full year of our product roadmap for our ESP tool, and we just moved everything else out of the way and right. developed that and deployed our, our social media library and added all sorts of functionalities to ESP. And that was an acknowledgement of the fact that right now it's critical immediately to be communicating with your customers and keeping them positive and, and you know, keeping that relationship going. Well, certainly the communications is, is so you know, important now. And that's everybody, everybody says, keep communicating with your clients, uh, keep, keep on tap to see, you know, how they're doing, uh, what, what they're thinking about, what, where, where they want to go in 2021 or whenever it can be. Um, and that's a critical thing to just keep that relationship going. And, and tools like Zoom or, or similar products, I think, you know, travel advisors are going to be um, talking with their clients even more in a way uh, than just, you know, just picking up the phone. You can do that. But now you can put up, call them on a Zoom call and just see how they're doing and, and talk with them and visually see each other. And uh, I think that's a, a great move forward. I mean, and, and then I guess there's another set to it. You know, we all talked about how, uh, I keep hearing about how artificial intelligence mm -hmm. is going to automate or uh, many of the functions and many travel advisors were worried. Does that mean, you know, there's going to be an AI travel advisor, so they're not going to need me anymore. And I think far from it, but uh, what are your thoughts about, you know, uh, artificial intelligence and what it can do for travel in the future? Um, well, first of all, I guess addressing the fear aspect of it, you know, artificial intelligence is, you know, from a pure technology perspective, yes, it's revolutionary, but, it's just another uh, evolution of technology. And what we've seen is that if we can take, if we can take the things that are repetitive and cumbersome and we can automate those, there's always room for the things that we as humans can uniquely do to be able to provide value and do more of. If that means that instead of doing, um, you know, again, you know, one of the, one of the examples I brought up was, was marketing. So in the next few weeks, we'll be rolling out a, a, a tool specifically to address some automation of touch points with customers uh, for, you know, some things which are really kind of meat and potatoes stuff like, you know, common reminders for things like deposit due dates on bookings and things of that nature. But then eventually getting into, you know, more fuzzy logic sorts of things like making recommendations for customers ongoing to keep that marketing cycle moving. Uh, so if we're doing that and taking some of that load off of you, you have room to be able to do these things that you're saying, like having more face-to-face -face communication. And I, and I have to imagine that somebody that's just had their trip pulled out from under them because it's been canceled sure will appreciate being able to have that, that direct sure. contact and nobody, somebody's looking out for them. So, um, you know, AI is going to play a, play a part in it. Um, uh, we're still identifying where that will work for us. Um, so much of what people do with our tools is is pretty, you know, normal searching. Probably what we'll see will be uh, on recommendations and, and finding ways to fit people for travel products. Letting your website do some of that work of pre-qualification can sure take a load off of the travel agent, agent so that when once you're talking to the customer, they've pre-qualified themselves. They, they're happier. They've got better options. Um, so we, we see a, a good place for that to fit in and, and encourage people to embrace it and don't, don't, be, uh, don't be afraid. Computers will not replace us. Well, you know, it's funny because we, and that's the uh, sort of initial reaction is that somehow travel advisors are going to be dis in, in, intermediated from the process. Uh, you know, it's always been let's, let's get cut out the middleman, and that's mm -hmm. been the constant kind of chant for every single new technology development. And it usually isn't the case. I mean, it just a few years ago, uh, we were all upset about the new distribution capability uh, mm -hmm. that the airlines seemed to be trying to impose. And we saw, well, that's a way to not only cut out uh, the travel advisor, but also uh, the GDS, the technology companies that are providing distribution because they were getting a cut of the action too. And it turned out and now it looks like the GDS are kind of at the forefront of developing the darn thing with the NDC, and they're working right. with, guess what, travel advisors, uh, right. so that airlines can sell the variety of products they seem to think they have uh, with, with all the different ancillary services that they're actually making money on, right? Right, right, yeah. Travel, travel is not a series of widgets being cranked out on an assembly line. It's, it's always going to be uh, experiential, inspirational, relational, something you share, uh, and, you know, I don't, I, yeah, we're not, I don't think that we're going to see technology ever quite unfold in the doomsday ways that we think when we first see something like NDC, 
uh, and there will be a place for all of us. We'll, we'll all keep evolving. Um, <clears throat> organizationally, we don't look anything like we did 25 years ago. If we, if we hung on to our team that we, were, that we had 25 years ago and kept them in the same roles, we wouldn't be a company today. Uh, so we're always looking for ways to transform ourselves but still stay in, you know, in our role and use our philosophy of being a partner to travel agencies. Uh, and probably each one of, of the advisors watching this can look at half a dozen situations where what, what they're doing now is fundamentally different than it was 20 to 25 years ago. And how oh, yeah. Them. Well, we have so much more. The tools that we have are so much more readily available. And, you know, it's just a question of, as you said, what's next? I mean, what's yep. next for the, the industry now? Uh, is there anything else you want to tell our 100,000 uh, travel advisors out there about Passport Online and how technology has evolved or will evolve to meet uh, travel advisors' needs? Well, uh, as much as I love talking about Passport Online and our, our products, I actually want to take the opportunity just to compliment uh, travel advisors through this and, and how they've been persevering through this tough time. Uh, it has been tough, and you know we've just been focused on trying to help uh, help you stay whole so that we can all come out of this together on the other side of it stronger. And we've just been honored to be there for you and to see your resilience. And we really appreciate the trust that you've shown in us. Um, we really uh, uh, have been uh, you know, feeling very honored to be able to be part of what helps you get through Pets and Real uh, touching conversations between our sales team and advisors that are, you know, we find ourselves almost sometimes being in the therapist position Mm -hmm. And uh, we just, you know, we're just reminded, you know, what, what a privilege, privilege it is to be in this business and serving you. And we don't know what the next <clears throat> big evolution is going to be beyond the things we've already talked about today. But, you know, if the last few months have taught us anything, it's that the world can change on a dime and in ways that nobody was anticipating. No. And we'll just keep our eyes open and keep working our, our back ends off to make sure that we're, uh, we're seeing what's coming and make sure that we're ready to provide you with the, the tools and the services that we all need. Well, Greg, I want to thank you for taking the time. It was a thoughtful and very interesting discussion about technology and obviously what Passport Online has been doing over the past 25 years, but it also was a chance for us to take a look at at how technology has evolved and how it will evolve, especially now, you know, in this latest crisis for that we all thought would be over, but it isn't yet. And uh, but again, uh, it has there's new technology that is helping us even through this. But again, uh, thank you and stay safe and stay healthy. You as well. Thank you very much for having me today. I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report.